Hello, my name is Matthew Jensen, and today I will be showing you everything you need to know about FOP2. Let's get into it. The best way to access the FOP2 interface is to click on the bookmark that should have been added to your Chrome bookmark bar. At this point, you will be prompted for an extension and a password. You can find your extension from the number in the top left of your desk phone. Reach out to us if you don't know your password. After you have logged in, we recommend pinning the FOP2 tab. You can accomplish this by right-clicking the tab and selecting Pin. This makes the tab smaller and keeps it more out of the way and ensures that it is open at all times. When you log into FOP2, you will see that the interface is divided into a few different sections. The biggest section contains an indicator for each extension in the office. From each button, you can determine the extension number, name, and status of the phone. If the button is green, then the phone is currently online and ready to make calls. If it is orange, then that phone is currently on a call. While in this state, you can see who the extension is connected to and how long they have been connected to that call. You can also see if there are any new or old voicemails for each extension. For example, this extension here has one new voicemail and this one has one new voicemail and one old voicemail. Also, if a button is grayed out, then the phone is offline, likely because it is powered off or without internet. This section over here allows you to see if anybody is in the parking lot. When someone is in the parking lot, you can see how long they have left before they are sent back to the original person who placed them in the parking lot. This section up here is the action bar and by using these buttons, you can perform many different actions on different calls. The dial option allows you to call one of the other extensions. If I want to call my soft phone, I simply select it on the screen and press dial. You will hear my phone start to ring. When I answer it, it begins ringing to my soft phone. And when that is answered, you see that they both become orange and indicate that they are on a call. If you wish to transfer your current call to another extension, simply select the intended destination and then use one of these transfer buttons. This button will do what is called a blind transfer and this one will do an intended transfer. This one will send a call to the mailbox and this button will send a call to the mobile phone associated with the extension that you select. An intended transfer will first allow you to announce who is calling and then when you end your call the transfer will be completed to that person while a blind transfer will immediately send the external party to the person you are transferring to. To demonstrate let me transfer this current call to my Google Voice extension here. So I simply select this button and press blind transfer. My phone begins to ring. When I answer it the call is connected and the transfer has been made. Moving on down the line of options, we get to call pickup. This will allow you to pick up a call that is ringing on someone else's phone. For example, I will call extension 220 from extension 230. This phone begins to ring, except let's pretend that I want to pick it up from my extension 200. I simply select this option here and press call pickup. 200 begins to ring, and when it is answered, it connects to the call, even though this phone was originally calling extension 220. Now, depending on your permission level, you may be able to see this listen and listen and whisper buttons. The first one allows you to listen in on another call. Simply select an extension that is in a current call and press this button. A call will be initiated to your extension and you will hear both sides of the conversation. They will not hear you though. If you would like to be able to coach a coworker, you can use the listen and whisper function. In this scenario, if you select the button of somebody who is currently on a call and press this, when you answer your phone, you will be able to speak to the person on one side of the call and hear both sides of the call at the same time. However, the external party will not be able to hear your voice. 
This allows you to coach someone and tell them what to say or remind them to ask certain questions. Moving on, we see the hang up button. This button does what it seems to indicate. By pressing it while selecting a call, you will end that call. Confirm hang up 230, are you sure? Yes, the call has been ended. Finally, you can record a call with this button here. You simply select a call that is in progress, select the record call button, and this icon here shows up. After you are done recording that section of the call, simply press the record call button again and finish your call. If you want to listen to the recording later, you can come to this icon here and select recordings and your recording should show up here. Also, if you want to see your call history, you can access that in this menu here as well. Keeping contacts up to date is very important to ensure that after hours calls are routed to the correct IVRs and so that you can be aware of who is calling before you pick up the phone. To add new contacts, click on the down arrow in the top right corner of the screen, then click on contacts. To add a new contact, click the plus symbol. In the beginning of the first name field, start the name by adding the two or three letter prefix associated with the contact type. If the contact is a caregiver, this prefix is a CG. If it is a client, the prefix is CL. You can see the rest of the prefixes on the screen or in the video description. If someone has more than one number, it is better to create separate contact entries for each type of number. At the end of the last name, enter the phone number type in uppercase within parentheses, H for home, O for office, or M for mobile. In the company field, add any information that will help identify this person. You might indicate a title such as administrator at life care, or a relationship to a client such as sister of Geraldine Smith. You could also write things like direct all calls from this person to HISC owner. The reason for entering this information is because it shows up in the FOP2 pop-up window when a call comes in. Finally, be sure to add the phone number of the contact. Don't forget to save the contact by clicking the save button at the bottom. Consistency is key. If an office can maintain their contact list, it will provide a better user experience with the phone system as a whole. The best way to dial someone in the FOP2 context is to use the dial feature here. Type the name of the person you wish to call, and if that person is in your company directory, you will see their names below along with their numbers. You will either see their mobile, M, or home H numbers. For example, to look up David Jensen, just start typing Jensen until you see him, possibly, among others, show up. Use your down arrow key to select the right one and hit enter. Your phone should start to ring. When you pick up the handset or hit the speakerphone button, the system will automatically start calling that person. This is a huge time saver and it prevents you from misdialing a number. You can also use this dial box to transfer to any external number while in a call. That covers it for most of the stuff relating to the main FOP2 interface. However, there is also a Chrome extension that provides some useful features. This should already be set up, but if it isn't, just give us a call and we'll walk you through the setup process. Clicking on the phone icon will show you the status of the other extensions in the office. You can also call them by clicking on their names. This is nice. However, the best feature this Chrome extension adds is the ability to click numbers to call them. The extension is reading the pages you open on Chrome and finding numbers to call. For example, if you are on our website at convergentcommunications.net and want to give us a call, instead of referencing this number and typing it into your phone, you can simply click it and it will begin to call us. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work on certain websites. For example, ClearCare already links caregiver phone numbers to another function. Fear not, in those scenarios, simply select the entire number right click and press dial. Your phone will ring and when you answer, the call will be made to the number you just selected. Well, we've basically covered everything you need to know about FOP2. 
If you have any questions, reach out to us at 863-229-3099. We'd be happy to hear from you.